So in this next video for module 5, we are going to see how to use loops. Um, so in this case, the example we are going to use is a simple menu to buy coffee. Um, so let's say we offer the user a menu to buy uh, three different sizes of coffee and the quantity that they can buy and they can keep buying the coffee until they maybe enter queue to quit. So now we are giving them a menu and we are staying in the loop and not only are we staying in the loop, we also have a couple of things to do in the loop if we are going to present to them finally the total amount um, of coffee that they bought, whether it's the quantity or the price, we need to be able to do certain things inside the loop. So let's start. I have a comment here that says, simple menu to buy coffee. This program uses while loops and finds the total price of coffee after the customer has finished ordering whatever they want. Um, so I'm going to start out by having some variables created that we would need to use especially if we are going to calculate the price. So let's say total uh, for total price equals zero. We'll start with that. Then we also said we are going to ask them the quantity. So if the user says, I want to buy a small coffee, we ask them, well, how many small coffees would you like? So we will call that um, S quantity, and I will set that to zero. We will also have a couple of other variables like that called M quantity for medium quantity and L quantity for large quantity. And the reason being we can keep track of the different the quantity for the different sizes separately. So it all depends on what you need for your application. Um, and then finally we are going to have a variable for choice which is our choice that we are going to ask the user to enter. So choice is just going to be a letter so I don't need to convert it to anything. So I'm going to just read input from the user that says please enter your choice. Make the screen a little wider. Please enter your choice of coffee. So you say S within parentheses for small, M for medium, and L for large. So the user knows to enter S for small, M for medium, or L for large. Um, and of course, we must tell them what if they are done, if they want to enter Q, then they can quit. So Q to quit. And so there is our prompt to the user that will read the choice and put it into this variable choice. Now, just like we used the syntax if for conditional, for loops, we are going to use the syntax while. So we are going to say while choice not equal to the letter Q, as long as the choice is not equal to that letter, I want to go into my loop. And here, I have to now branch off. So imagine a flowchart. We are in the condition. Um, where choice is not equal to Q. That means they don't want to quit. Now we branch off into three different things. If choice is equal to, notice the double equal to sign uh, for the conditional equality test. If choice equals small, then I want to do a couple of things. I want to ask them uh, for the quantity. So S quantity will be equal to input and you're going to say how many would you like if they say small so how many coffees would you like and that will get read into S quantity and we can say then total equals S quantity times I'll come up with a price for a small coffee how about $1.75 something like that so now if they say I want two small coffees, then it gets multiplied by $1.75 and that goes into um, total. So that is the total price for actually I should say total plus that way it will get added as they buy more coffee. We will keep a cumulative total. Now if you want to keep the 
price of small coffee separately and medium coffee separately, then you must have multiple variables. One variable won't do it. You'll have to do S total, M total, and so on and so forth. So those are some things that you can try on your own. So if choice is equal to S, then this is what we have done. We have asked them how many coffees would they like, and then you take that quantity, multiply it by 1.75, which is, I'm assuming, just the price of small coffee, and then you add that to total. So that's done. Now let's go and do L if, what if their choice is equal to medium? Notice how I check for the M and the S inside of the single quote because it's a character. Then you do M quantity is equal to, and we do all of the same thing over again. So I'm going to copy all of that and paste it. But the only difference is I'm going to change this S quantity to M quantity. And I'm going to change the price to 275 for medium coffee. And I'm going to copy all of this, and we're going to do it one more time for large coffee. So let's go here and say, well, L if choice is equal to large, then total will be L quantity is equal to how many would you like? And maybe 375 for a large coffee. So we got all the different coffees. What if they enter some other character? Then you want to say print. Uh, illegal size. Maybe we don't have the letter P or R for size. So you tell them it's illegal. And we go back and we have to read the input one more time. Remember, this is a loop. And in a loop, if you want to stay inside the loop, after you've displayed the menu, you've gotten your choice, you want to display the menu again. And since this choice statement is outside this loop, it's going to get executed the first time. And then once the loop has gone through its cycle one time, we need to be able to come here to our while statement here, not inside the else, but outside of the else where my while is and say choice equals, and in fact, this whole statement here, we got to read the input again. That way, it will keep our loop going. Otherwise, we will get stuck in an infinite loop where we read our input only one time, and we have not read it a second time, or multiple times, until they enter Q to quit. So, so there is choice, and we read the input one more time until they hit enter, uh, Q to quit. And when they hit Q to quit, we come out here, and we say print the total to the user. So let's not tell them this is what you bought and this is how much it's going to cost you. So let's say print you ordered and let's tell them what all they ordered first. You ordered, let's say S quantity, L quantity, so notice I'm separating the variables with all of my text that goes in there and large coffees. So that only gives them the numbers of the coffee that they've ordered. Then you tell them your total cost is, and I want to put a dollar sign because I want to tell them how many dollars it was and total. And when we're done with this, we'll see how it looks. And we're going to do a little bit of formatting in this case. So let's see how this looks so far. So we have our input that we read from the user. We have our while. We have our if conditions inside of that while to check and see whether it is small, medium, or large. So we can branch off. And so let's save this file. And let me run it so we can get our shell. And it says, OK, please enter your choice. Let's enter S for small. It says, how many would you like? Let's say two. And it didn't like something about it. So it's a scant multiply sequence by non-int of type float. So we have some things that we need to change. So this quantity that we are reading has to be converted to an int because the quantity is, after all, an int. 
and not a string. So let's do that for all of our quantity. So that way, this way, when we get some errors, we'll know how to fix some of these things, and you know what it's talking about. So we'll change all our quantity. So it says I cannot multiply a string by a float, which is our price. So let's see how that works. Let's save it. And let's run it. OK, so and let's type in small 2. And let's say quit. So we entered two small coffees. Let's see how that looks. So it says you order two small, zero medium, zero, zero large coffees. And your total cost is uh, 3.5. That looks okay, but the formatting doesn't look super good. I would like it to say 350, ideally, right? So, but let's check a couple of other things, and then we'll fix all the formatting. So let's check and see if I get a small one, if I get a medium two, how does that look? So that that still works okay. Now let's try and do one more thing. Let's do an error checking. What if I enter a character that is not there? It's just illegal size. And then if I quit, it quits. It doesn't um, ask me for any more. So all that is working fine. Now let's come here and change our formatting a little bit. So here's how we do the formatting. Um, you can use the percent size to tell it, uh, percent point to F. Or the new way of formatting here tells us a couple of different things we can, we can do. So dollar sign and curly bracket, here's the syntax, and zero colon space point two f point two f says two digits after the decimal you close your curly bracket and when you come here to total you take away the comma and you're going to say dot format of total so that's my variable that i'm formatting so this is a new syntax where zero is essentially the number of these variables that we have here. We could have multiple variables here. Right now, I have only one variable, and the first variable starts at zero. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to do multiple variables all in the same print statement. So let's see how this works. So the syntax essentially says dollar sign, which is going to get printed. And after that, the curly bracket, everything inside of the curly bracket is for our formatting. And the point 0.2f says two digits after the decimal. And the dot format is a syntax for our um, variables itself. So if we run that, it says, OK, let's go back to our menu here. We're going to say small. I would like two. And large this time, maybe two. And quit. So it says it's $11. And I get two nice decimals. Um, let's try this one more time. We'll order. Um, small coffee and let's just get one and quit so 175 so that looks good now how do we get multiple variables what if I want to say well um, total quantity of coffees where you'd have to add small quantity medium quantity large quantity and so on and so forth so if I wanted to just output a quantity just to give you an example we'd come here and open another curly bracket and say the next variable is going to be 1. And for quantity, I really don't want any formatting. So I'm going to say 0.0f. That means 0 digits after the decimal. And come here after total and put a comma. And you can see my next variable that I have is, for example, s quantity. Um, I'm only outputting one quantity. But you could always modify this program, like I said, and try a few things on your own. So now what it's going to do is if I say, well, I want three small coffees and nothing else. It says your total cost is 525. And then, of course, the number three comes from that S quantity. So notice how you can have multiple variables on this line. And this number, the first number inside the curly bracket, stands for the number of the variables, starting with zero. Inside of the computer, everything always starts at zero. So total is the zeroth, which is the first variable then we have one and i could have more variables in there and they could all be formatted differently so this program kind of shows you a couple of different things shows you how to use a loop and how to use uh, conditions inside of the loop and how to format your output